Hi there, and welcome back to the channel Machining with Joe, a channel where I share with you guys my journey as a beginner machinist and any tips and tricks I pick up along the way. So, last week I got the mill all set up, the head trammed and the vice all square to the table. So, I've had a little play of it this week and the only problem that I've found so far is all the measurements on this thing are imperial so the hand wheel is actually measuring foul so that's going to be a bit of an issue for me because I always work in metric so I've ordered myself a DRO kit which I'll be fitting at a later date when that finally turns up but in today's video I want to try making some T-nuts and see how well I can get them using the foul measurement on here. So to start with I need to mill down this 25 millimeter bit of square bar so looking at the drawing our T bars need to be 14 millimeters on the actual top part of the T section and on the lower biggest part they need to be 24 mil so we can't take off too much here I literally just want to clean up the face so to do that I'm using my 50 mil face mill and I'm just going to take a light skim across these four sides and get this nice and square and clean looking So we've now flipped the part and this is our second side now that we're milling. So we're only taking off 0.3mm on each side. Literally all we're trying to do here is just clean up the material. So that's two of the four sides done now and I'll come back to you when all four sides are done and we can start marking out our part. Right then we've got our first machine part out of the milling machine. So it's this square block that's going to be the base for our T-nuts and I've just done a little bit of measurement and the width up here down one end we've got 24.23 millimetres and the other end we've got 24.24 millimetres. So we've only really got a 0.01 discrepancy end to end and down the bottom here we're actually bang on 24.09 and 24.09. So that is a fairly square, other than the ends at the minute, piece of material there. I've already deburred it and the finish on that has come out really nice with this face mill so really happy with that purchase off of eBay. So the next thing I think I'm going to start doing now is I'm going to start setting some of the depths in it before I add any features. So we've got one dimension of 24 millimetres to hit and the height dimension is 18 millimetres. So however we look at it, we're going to be taking off next to nothing on one side and about 6 millimetres on the other. So I think I'm going to start by taking it down to 24 millimetres and then after that I can aim to get the other side down to 18 millimetres. So I think as this one's 24.09 we'll sit that one in the vise and we only really need to take off 0.1 mil but I think I'm going to be a little bit generous because I think the tolerances on this is quite tight at 24 mil. So if I take off 0.2 mil then that should set us up to fit in there nicely. So once this part's done and we're just below 24mm, I can then start on the next part which is going to be taking this down all the way down to 18mm. Right then, we've got this down to 23.9mm, that gives us a 0.1mm clearance within the T-slots. So the next thing we need to do now is we need to move on to decking this. So basically at the minute it's, what was it, 24 point something mil and we need to get that down to 18 millimeters roughly. So we've got about six mil to get takeoff of this. 
So there's gonna be quite a lot of chips involved. So I'm just gonna speed through this process now and I'll come back once it's all done. So I've just finished machining the outline for our tea nuts and I've got to admit that was really fun. That's the first big thing I've ever milled on the machine and I'll show you in a minute the amount of mess I've made over there is outstanding. So what have we got here? So width on this is 23.9 millimetres and the overall height on this, one side I've measured 18.24 and the other side I've measured 18.20. So we've got a slight difference there. I measured that with a micrometer in the end because the vernier calipers just kept giving me a different reading each time. So I thought I'd go with the mic because it's a little bit more accurate. So I don't know if there's something wrong with my setup there or maybe I just had a chip somewhere, but we've got 0.04 millimeters difference there. But overall, I'm not too worried about that. So now we've got this, we need to machine in the T slots in this. So to do that, I think I'm gonna highlight it in red and then we'll mark up what part of material we need to remove. But so far, this is going really well and I've got to admit, it's really fun milling things on the machine and it's amazing the finish that you can get. So with my, pu with my face all redded out now, I can now scribe in my five millimeter line So we've got a five millimeter line there and I just need to do another five millimeter line on this other side. So with our two lines now scribed out, I can take this back over to the mill, swap over for an end mill and begin milling out these slots here. Right then, I just wanna quickly walk you through the setup I've got going on here before we start making our actual T slots. So I've got a carbide roughing end mill on here I think it's either 12 or 14 mil. Not too worried about the size of that. But basically what I've done, I've touched off on the top of our work and using a piece of paper set a gap. I've then moved the work piece away and I've wound the quill down nine millimeters according to that on our DRO. So what my plan is now is to do stages going along here until we get to our scribed line because I'm struggling a little bit to convert the foul measurements on the hand wheels to millimetres, I'm basically saying that 20 foul is roughly 0.5 millimetres. So that on that benchmark, that's what I'm going to be using to work along this workpiece. Given in mind, we've got 50 mil to take off here, so it should be about 10 passes. So let's get on with that. So because I'm not really doing that deep a cut, I'm going to switch it up from climb milling, which we're doing now, to conventional milling, which we'll do on the way back. That way it's just going to speed up the process and get this T-slot done in quick, quick time. So that's our first pass done, only another nine to go. So when the table's coming this way, which it is now, or sorry, when the table's going away from us, which it is now, that is what I think they call conventional milling. And when it's coming back the other way, it's what they call climb milling. I believe conventional milling, you can take off more material in one pass than climb milling, because climb milling, you run the risk of the workpiece jumping over the cutting tool or vice versa. But I'm just taking it nice and easy with 20 foul depths of cut. Ah, 
and you can definitely feel actually when you go to climb milling where the workpiece is almost being pulled through and um, you can actually feel the hand will go a lot lighter and it's almost like it's feeding itself through yeah there's a definite no noticeable feel between conventional and climb milling so i'm so my final pass now Hopefully once this pass is done, we can sit this in and see if it fits into our T-slot. I never realised just how much mess either the mill makes. After I've done this, I'll quickly show you exactly how much mess I've created just making these T-nuts. never realised just how messy a milling machine makes your workshop. So this is our finished T-nut. Obviously this isn't going to be one T-nut, I'm going to have to cut this up. I was hoping this would make four T-nuts, but fits in that groove lovely. So I'm going to try chopping this very carefully on the bandsaw. And then once I've done that, I'm just going to have to clean up the ends. And once all my ends are clean, I'll come back with the finished four T-nuts, hopefully. So, really happy of how these T-nuts have turned out. The finish on them is actually a really nice finish. I've not drilled and tapped the holes yet, but I'm going to do that off camera just because I've got to decide what size holes I want. I think I'm going to do two M8s and two M10s, but that's something I need to decide at a later date. But all the machining part is really done now, and I've test fitted these on the bed of my mill and got to admit they work really well. So really happy of how all of them turned out. And I just want to say one final thank you before I leave today. I just want to thank Aid over at Aid's workshop. So me and Aid exchanged stickers the other week and he also gave me a shout out on his channel. As a result of that shout out, I managed to reach out to a lot more people and get some of his subscribers to come and check out my channel and subscribe. So thank you to Aid and welcome to all the new subscribers that I've got recently. Other than that guys, that's all for today's video. Please go check out my other videos on my channel page. But for now that is all. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.